Welcome to week six, day four. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to create a statistics project. All right, let's get started. A good project should have five different parts. First, you need to ask a question. Then you need to have a plan for collecting data. The third step is you actually have to collect the data. The fourth step is you present your findings. And finally, you state a conclusion. So those are the five steps for having a great statistical project. Let's go through each one, one by one. We're gonna start with a question. For my project, my question is gonna be, how long does it take for a sixth grade student to get to school? Now, you don't have to go with this question if you're doing a project, right? There's millions of questions you could ask. You could say, how much sleep does a sixth grader get? Um, how many books does a sixth grader read in a year? Uh, how many pets do you have? Uh, you can measure temperature. You could even measure how long you spend on homework every night. But I've chosen my question for a couple specific reasons. First of all, my question can be answered with statistics, right? With numbers, you can measure it, exactly how long it takes you to get to school. And then secondly, my answers for each student should vary because everyone doesn't live at the same house. So I should get a lot of different data points, which is also good for a project like this. So the two things you're looking for when you're asking your question is, can your question be answered with numbers or data? And then are you gonna get a lot of different responses? Because you don't want every response to be the same. That won't make for a very interesting project. So those are the type of questions you should ask for a great statistical project. Let's move on to our plan. All right, a very smart person once said, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we need a plan for how we're gonna answer this question. In my case, I wanna ask all the sixth graders how long it takes them to get to school. Well, how am I gonna do this? Well, my first step is gonna to be to ask all the sixth grade teachers to permission to go and speak to their class for about a minute in order to explain that I need them to collect this data for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the classroom and I'm gonna say, when you get into your car, when you leave your house this morning or tomorrow morning to go to school, I want you to record how long it takes you until you get into the front door. So either on your phone or a stopwatch or whatever you have, just record how long it takes you to get from leaving your door to getting into the school's door. Right now, I'm going to give you a note card. And you just write that down on that note card, and then I'll come by and collect it tomorrow after school. Perfect. Very easy. That's going to be my plan. But of course, I have to talk to the teachers first, and then I have to prepare my little speech that I'm going to give to each class. Right. But it's a simple plan to collect the data I need. So our next step is to actually do it. All right. We have to go in and collect all the data. So again, I'm having other students collect the data for me. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect those little note cards so it's nice and simple and I can have an easy way to retrieve the data and then I can sort it and organize it and do whatever I like. But this is a good way to collect the data from a bunch of kids It's just have me give them or have them give me the note cards rather than having to write everything down. All right, simple and easy. Now, if you've chosen a project that you can look up online, like uh, what's the average height of an NBA player, or what's the average weight of an NFL football player, or what does uh, the average firefighter make across all 50 states, right? All of those things you can look up on the internet, so you're going to have a different plan to collect your data. But one way or another, you have to collect your data points. All right, our fourth step is presenting the data. So this week, we've gone through a lot of different ways of presenting data. We talked about dot plots, we talked about box plots, and we talked about histograms. What I would do is I would do each one of those things that we learned. Now, as you advance through school, you're gonna learn a lot of different ways to present data, right? But for now, this week, we've talked about three different ways. So I would actually make a chart with each one and present my data that way, right? That way you can see you know, how the data lines up, if it's a good uh, predictive tool or not, and what your averages are, right? Maybe you have a lot of outliers, right? Those are the numbers on the outside of the data. So that might, it might not make it good for predicting, okay? Speaking of outliers, let's do one more vocabulary word before we go. Let's go ahead and define outliers now. An outlier is a value that lies outside 
or is much smaller or larger than most of the other values in a set of data. At the end of our presentation, we should have our conclusions. Our conclusion is essentially answering the first question we asked, right? So our question was, how long does it take uh, the sixth grade students to get to school? Well, I want to answer my question. I want to say, you know, on average or the mean sixth grader gets to school in what, 17 minutes. However, there's a lot of outliers. So this isn't a great predictive tool because my mean uh, absolute deviation is 3.7, right? Which is a pretty high number. Okay. That's a great way to answer a question. Now, one thing I like to do as like a little added bonus on my questions is to provide uh, an area for further research. So you might say, I found this and this to be true. However, it might be beneficial to do another, to repeat this research project at another school or in a different grade, right? So answering the question with a further research opportunity helps other kids, you know, perhaps plan a research project themselves, and it just shows that you went that extra mile. So those are our five steps to having a great research project for statistics. We ask a question, we plan, we collect data, we present the data, and we conclude by answering our questions. All right, so if you have to do a sixth grade project this year, I hope this video will help you out a lot. That's all for today. Your only homework is going to be to submit an assignment. If you do end up having a sixth grade project, come on back, submit your project ideas. I'd be happy to give you some pointers. Okay, that's it for today. We'll see you back tomorrow for your review and quiz. See you then. Bye.